Hello and welcome. In this video, I want to talk about Houdini digital assets and what they are. So this will be an introduction and a beginner level on what they are and how to use them. So let's start at the beginning on what are Houdini digital assets or short HDAs. So we will often say HDAs when we talk about digital assets. So digital assets are basically a way of creating your own tools inside of Houdini. So you will have a certain node graph, certain structure, a certain system, and you can turn that into one custom node, which is then called a digital asset. So this will be extremely useful if you, for example, build something that generates a certain task. So we can collapse that into one node uh, and then we can share this with other people or for in the future, you could just use that node again. So let's take a small overview of this. So here I have a node network that generates a tree. So all these nodes here, they're used to generate, for example, this tree. But now how do I make this in a more like useful package, like one node? And this one node is also more useful to share with other people. So let's say you work in a studio and you would love to also have other people using the generator you built. We want to then package this into a digital asset. So in one node, and we can give this a name like quick tree generator and then we can share this tree generator with the studio or with other people so they can also benefit from the procedural tools and generations here so the person who also makes the network will also be able to make custom interfaces so we can play around with the visuals and the looks on what the tool is outputting so how does my tree look how many leaves does it have how many branches should there be things like that so this is overall what the workflow would look like. So you build a node network, you convert that into one tool, and then you can create your own interface to make the final tool and use the interface. Now, another thing useful here is that if we open the tab menu, you will be able to call the node whenever we try type in three, for example. So if you make a rock tool and you would type in rock, you will see your rock tool. So that's something that's really useful for long term so if you build a lot of tools you will also be able to call them back again in the tab menu so if again they make something like a rock tool or something special for generating something else you could just type in the name and you will see your tools pop up so overall these are powerful nodes and powerful way of working where we can build custom tools or digital assets to support your workflow and pipeline so a studio will make its own tool sets or its own library to support everyone so they could benefit from procedural tools and don't have to worry about, for example, doing everything more manually, but having a couple procedural tools in their background to generate things like trees or houses or streets and things like that. So they can have some procedural approaches working in the background. So eventually what you want is you want to build your own tool set, your own library. So over the long term, this will be useful. Like if you ever again need something like a building tool, once you made the building tool, you can always use that and you can also modify it. So you can also dive in this node and change the nodes in there to make it more what you're looking for. So here you will be able to create your own tool sets like auto UVing, trim textures, uh, something for automatically converting something to game resolution, things like that. Now, with that said, you have some idea about what digital assets are. And now let's jump into Houdini and give you a quick example on how this is done. So here in Houdini, let's do a small example of a digital asset. I'm going to make a chain tool. So by drawing a curve, I can then have the automatically convert that into a chain model. So here in Houdini, we have then our 2D view and our node graph here. So here we'll be placing down the nodes. So we're going to press tab to place nodes. So press tab and we're going to start out with a torus shape. So this will be a 3D geometry. And we're going to go inside of this object. So we have the geometry layer. And I'm also going to press P here for my little menu. Uh, I like to use that menu here. It's also quite adjustable in size. So we have that. So this is then my base shape, but I also want to modify this a bit more. And the way I'm going to do this is by jumping into our handle here. 
our main handle. And I'm also going to press number two on the keyboard to enter my point selection mode. So point selection is number two, and I can now grab here these points. I should let's aim a bit more here at the top so we can grab these. Then we can press T for transforming this, or you could also use here move T. You can press that as well. And we're going to move this on the side. Now, as you can see, my pivot point is not perfectly, so I'm going to press M for changing my pivot. And here we can drag that out. So this is then my chain model. So my model is basically done. Only thing here that I want to do is actually to make sure this is in my center. So I'm going to use the match axis uh, or size here. And this will then automatically, this will automatically be then in my center of the world. So you can see it's perfectly in the middle of my world now. So that's the 3D geometry for this part. Now the second part is actually drawing a curve. So we can just type in draw curve. And this node will allow us to draw a curve on this plane here. So again, we're going to switch here to our main handle. So you should see this red sphere on your mouse and you can just draw a curve now. So let's draw a curve like that. So it will be on that surface. You can also go outside the surface. You're not limited to that. Now, next step would then be copying this model on the curve. So a quick way for this as well is, for example, using the copy to curve. So we can copy models on a curve. So here we have input geometry to copy and targeted curve. So here's my model and here's my curve. And this is then my result. Now, there are a few things I want to tweak. So you can see that the size is pretty large. So normally, if you go into some of the settings called scaling, you should be able to actually have a slider for the scale. So let's bring that all the way down. And I already see another thing that I want to handle is my curve. If I look at the points, they are not evenly spaced out. So you could see that the points are not evenly spaced out. To make sure they are a bit more evenly spaced out, let's use a resample node. So with a resample, we will be able to control the density. And you can see that these are more nicely aligned. So we can play around with the length here. So maybe we want less like so. And let's go back here to my curve. And it's already a lot better. So they're now evenly spaced out. So only thing left here is to fix the rotations. So we can go here to our additional rotations mode. And we can play around here with the roll, jaw, and pitch. And the first one I'm going to take a look at is here the jaw. So let's enable this and we're going to probably rotate this 90 degrees. So now they are nicely like so. Maybe the scale should be a bit bigger like that. And now to finish off my tool, I need to twist this. So I'm going to enable here roll and twisting. So we can roll this, but I'm interested here in twisting this. So let's increase the twisting value. And you can see now we have actually a chain model. So we can further play around more, as you can see with settings here. But this is my main uh, model here. So again, I could click on my curve and draw another one. And we can draw more if you want to. So this is my procedural tool where I can here draw a curve and it automatically gets converted into this chain model. So now let's convert this into a procedural tool. So there are a couple of ways of doing this, but I'm going to show you the most convenient and simple way of doing this. So I want to select everything that I want in my tool. So this is my logic and I would like to have my draw curve as input. So I'm not going to import that in. So I won't include that in my tool because I want to control this outside of my tool. Then we're going to go to assets, create new digital asset, and then here we can fill in the name. So in this case, we can, for example, just call it chain, chain tool. And then we're going to press accept. So by default, it's saved under your documents, Houdini 18.5, and then under the OTL folder. So press apply. 
and also now this menu will pop up. So this is the menu where we're going to create the interface. So here under parameters, this is where we're going to create our custom interface with parameters. So let's press accept and it will actually close the menu. And you can see that this is what is now being created. So we have our input as curve and then we have here our tool, which is then uh, our logic here. So this is basically done. So we have a small procedural tool. So every time I would now type in chain tool, I now have this. And if I plug in my curve, it will give me that result. So if we want to also quickly add some parameters, we again have to open our menu here. So we're going to go to edit properties. This will open that menu and we're going to create some parameters here. So the easiest way is by drag and dropping this. So we're going to go inside of our tool. And we're going to go and grab here, for example, uh, you can grab the twisting, but I'm mainly interested here. Let's grab the scaling. So uniform scale. And let's also here grab that uh, spacing of the resample. So the resample controls the spacing between the change. So here we have the length. Maybe I can change the name here then to spacing. And once that is done, you can again press apply or accept. So accept will also close the menu. And if I go now back one layer, I can see that I have these two sliders that I just created. So I can play around with that scale and I can also play around with the spacing. So you could see now it's, since I'm going that big, it might be a bit more tricky to fill in these gaps. So here we have a different result. So this is on a base level, how you create a tool and how to create parameters uh, for your custom interface. We're going to build more videos covering digital asset creation, but this is just quickly what, what it is and how you could use it as well. So if you need more information, I recommend you watching the tutorial series and follow along with what we're going to create to have some more view and explanation on how this is done. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.